¿Cómo lo aplico? Yo, lo que yo creo, con, tengo la convic convicción de que no hay que joder con el sistema. Hay que ser tajante. Stop. Hasta acá te permito, ya está, límite. Corta el cuello del dragón. Así no más sencillo. Ser tajante. Y para ser tajante tienes que ser como este ser que hizo esto. Justamente el caso que le voy a poner. Fíjense cómo este ser eh, eh, lidia con la gente del servicio de impuestos internos de los Estados Unidos. ¿Eh? Y le pone en jaque con la Common Law. O sea, prácticamente, fíjense, es impresionante esto. Voy a poner en el escritorio y fíjense cómo lidia este hombre con la IRS de Estados Unidos. Ok, the IRS, and what is the IRS coming after you saying? What are they saying to you? They're saying that uh, they have made assessments, which they can't, because they've oh. changed. <laughs> They've now I, turned me into a small business general contractor. Because that's what the 1090 is. That's what I was saying. That's, that's a contract. It didn't make any sense. And I'm not a contractor, and I'm not okay. a small business. So, like I said, what you need to do, the best thing for me, like I always tell people all the time, is like I say to them, look, I believe what you're doing is extortion. What I believe what you're doing is fraud. You notice the IRS. What I believe what you're doing to me is extortion. You're trying to claim that I owe a debt, which I do not believe I owe. And now if some man's going to come forward into open court under oath of affirmation and swear on a stack of Bibles that I owe money, I will work a settlement with that man. But until that point, you know what? Honestly, I believe that you're trying to commit extortion, and I believe what you're doing is fraud. And if you don't cease and desist immediately, well, I'm going to submit a case against you in the common law court of record because you're causing me stress. And if you don't if, – if I get another notice like this, any time any more correspondences come between me and you – I am going to charge you uh, $10,000 for every time I get a letter in the mail. Okay. And now, is that because 35 years ago I signed a W-4? Nope. And any time, you could, you could just say, you know what? You're causing me harm. You're causing me injury. You're stressing me out. I don't wish to be stressed. I don't wish to be uh, 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 any aggravation from anybody. When my mailbox comes in, I better not see another damn letter from you. And this is what I would tell them, exactly what I said. I don't know if you have to rewind it and do it again because Ann says I talk too much, but I just do what I just said. You just tell them that you're going to file a claim that you've been injured. You've been wronged because that's the biggest word in law is you've been wronged, that you believe that you're causing me stress and harm, and uh, you do not have a lawful claim to any of my property. And if some man wants to claim the right to my property, my money, Let him come forth to a common law court of record, state his case in front of a 12 judges, and maybe the 12 judges will find for that man. Because an, because an attorney cannot speak under oath of affirmation in, in an open court in a court of record. My sister, I'll give you a simple one. My sister did this to her ex-husband. She was getting divorced. My sister had no money because my her husband hid all the assets. So he has a scuba shop and everything. Like he's got big bucks. So he had three attorneys plus a woman attorney. So she was smart to get a woman attorney to help defend him against a woman. So I wasn't able to get to New York, so I told my sister what to do on the phone, and she did great. What happened was when the judge started the court, I said to my sister, the judge is going to introduce the parties. So when I, you say to yourself, you say to the judge, say, I'm Karen Garner, and I'm here to, to present me and my case to the court. And the judge will say, okay, are you represented? And she said, just say, no, I'm here to present me and my case to the court. I've been aggrieved, and I'm here to um, we'll dispense the money. A constructive trust is a really good one to do. So um, she said, okay. The judge said, I understand. So then the other side introduced themselves, and they all the lawyers, my sister said, introduced themselves. And then so then my sister went first, and the judge said, okay, state your case. So she stated her case, and then the other side went, my, my, my uh, ex-brother-in-law. And then the lady started to speak, and my sister said, I object. And the judge says, wait a second. You had your turn. Now it's their turn. It's like, oh, did my husband have a sex change? And they were like, what? I think I hear a woman talking. That's not my husband. And she was like, well, it is his attorney. He's like, uh, ma'am, when I introduced myself to the court, did I say I was represented by an attorney? No. Did I say I was representing myself? No. I said I presented myself in the court, in the case of the court, right? As she, she said to the judge, you know the rules, right? And she said, yeah, I know the rules. So she told the attorney to sit down. And the attorney lady's like, what, what, what? He paid me good bucks. She said, do you have – the judge said to the attorney lady, he was a lady judge, said, do you have any um, firsthand knowledge? of the conversations or any of the events that transpired between that man and that woman during their marriage? And she said, the judge, the lawyer lady said, no. So then the judge said, well, then you know the rules. You need to sit down. 
and he needs to speak. He needs to defend himself. So my sister just clawed him because the judges, the, the attorneys aren't allowed to speak in an open court unless they have firsthand knowledge to the events that happened. And Mr. Cherry, if you go back on Angela's calls, look for Mr. Cherry. Mr. Cherry shows you how to knock the attorneys out of the box in two seconds. And I was doing this years ago. And Mr. Cherry did it like a year or two ago on Angela's calls, and I said, it does work. You knock the attorneys right out of the picture. So if the IRS tries to come to the court with an attorney, you knock the IRS's attorneys right out of the picture. I say, wait a second. This is a common law court of record. I'm presenting my case of an injury. I've been harmed. I've been injured by something or somebody called the IRS. Now, their attorney can't speak. Only IRS can speak. Oh, IRS didn't appear. Oh, then I guess I win the judgment. And it's a NILI. It's a NIL, N-I-L, NIL, the set judgment. The other side failed to speak. The other side failed to answer. The other side failed to tell the attorney what to do. I want my judgment, and I want it now. And it's over. So uh, I hope that helps. Uh, but, uh, okay, cool. You said um, state, state court. Now, yep, in state Colorado, where I am at the moment, um, state courts are really, really crooked. Right. And most people say go to the federal court. Now, the federal district court claims that it is a court of record. Every federal, if you, you could do it either way. It's either, you could Google um, the number 25. I'll, I'll type it on the board if you're looking on the board right here. No, I'm not. Okay, well, it's um, Cors Juris Secundum. You've heard of that, right? CJS? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's the second version of it. It's, um, you could just look on the federal courts, section 744. And, or you could look on the Cors Juris, not the Secundum, the original one, uh, that's volume 25 on the federal courts, course, jurors, volume 25, section 344. And it says, all federal district courts are courts of record, period. Simple. So don't go into something called the United States Tax Court, the United States Claim Court, the United States Any Court. No. Oh, I would never touch the tax court. You just go to the federal district court. Everybody knows where the federal district court is in their state. So if anybody says, well, no, we call it the United States District Court. It's like, watch this. Let me, let me call up the clerk of the court's office down there. Like, let, 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 me, let me get this one up. Yeah, ma'am, is this the federal district court? Yes, it is, sir. Okay, there you go. Actually, you uh, there, are, there are codes and statutes that say that it's district court with little letters of the United States, not the, that the well, federal that's, that's, district court is a – is a territorial court. Like I, said, like I said, I gave a great example before. When I went to submit my lawsuit in 2009, they changed all the codes and numbers around on me. So then I was actually going, saying I was a Vietnam vet not getting medical benefits. So they all of a sudden, they took all the Title 36 codes and they switched it over to Vietnam vet codes. And all the children codes, they switched over to Title 65. So they switched all the codes on me. So I was like, you know what? How do I get away from their code world? I learned a common law court of record by watching Billy Thornton. And I said, the only problem with Billy Thornton is he talks too much to the man in the black robe. He should just say, look, this is going to be done in 21 days. You're going to give me an answer. On day 22, I want your stamp of this court on, that, on, this, on this order. And it's done. The people know how to appeal it. If they don't want to appeal it, I'm going to sell this judgment in about 20 seconds. So this, that's the summons to appear. You have 21 days to answer, or this order is final. And even if – then that's it. You just deal with the common law court of record. You get rid of all – I hear poor people like you asking all the time and all these – I mean, nice Mr. Constitution, man. He's giving you all these codes. He's giving you all these Constitution stuff. He's giving you all these citations. But I said Barack Obama won. I told you guys a month ago. I said when Barack Obama wins, he's going to put two more people on a Supreme Court. And every single thing that you used for the last 50 years of your life is going to be thrown out the window. So if you want to keep playing that the United States Supreme Court is the highest court of the government instead of the land, it's not the highest court of the land. It's the highest court of the United States government. The highest, the highest court of the land, and if you Google the word land, it says people, the people of the land. The highest court of the land of the people is the common law court of record. That's why I said what's the characteristic of a federal court? Section 344, chorus juris. Volume 25. It says it right there. All federal, it said federal district courts are courts of record. End of the story. Why would I want to go into any other court other than a federal district court? And it's all local. I don't know. 
The United, you, you know, they've changed the. They claim now that the United States and the United States of America are the same. Well, that's what I'm saying is they changed it. You didn't change it. I, like this is just says, well, well, we don't believe there's a common law courts anymore. Well, we don't believe. Well, we don't do common law courts anymore. It's like so. When did we become me? We well, is what yeah. the judges and everybody here. That's fine. We is not me. When did the common law court outlaw? Can you show me? Of course, like I said, you see that in traffic court all the time. That they'll say something like, "Well, is there a reason why I can't establish a case in a common law court of record and move the state prosecutor or the county prosecutor who's trying to prosecute a false charge that I went to, uh, of a crime that I drove too fast? Is there a reason why I can't um, drag him into a common law court of record and bring him into my case?" Well, they're and trying they, to use municipal color of law. Well, what they'll say is, "Well, we don't do the common law anymore." It's like, yeah, can you show me where the common law has been outlawed? Can you show me where it says somewhere that we do – show me where it says that because I hear you saying that we don't do common law jury trials anymore. Can you show me where it's written down? It's like, okay, and it's like, well, there's that code. It's like, well, that's a code. That's not a law. Where, where, was, where was it outlawed? When, when did you throw away my constitution? Because the Seventh Amendment says if this is worth more than $20, I have the right to move a common law court of record, and once the – the, the jury came down with a verdict, it can't be heard or retried by any other court in this land. Because that's what I say to people. Oh, that's a great thing to say to the judge. You say that to the judge. If the judge starts going off on you about stuff, say, judge, if I lose, can I appeal this? And the judge says, yes, you can appeal it. Well, then I'm not on a court of record. Because in a common law court of record, under the Seventh Amendment says, once it's been tried by a jury in a common law court of record, it cannot be reheard or retried by any other court in this land. So obviously, judge, I'm in the wrong court. Because I what constitution are you using? I mean, I, you're not a party to the Constitution. That's the right. United States. You're not a party to the Constitution, but the state and the federal government are. And the state and the federal government says that this is a contract between the governments, that we will not interfere with the rights of man. And if anybody interferes with the rights of man, the man has the right to come back and sue the government. The Constitution is just to protect our rights. It's just to make sure that the government doesn't interfere with our rights. That's all. I'm not a party to it. I don't want to be a party to it. You know, because once you sign a contract, you relinquish certain rights to obtain privileges. So I don't want a privilege from anybody. My dad taught me this when I was a little kid. If you sign your name more than once or twice, if you should be an honest man. It's an old saying. An honest man should be able to go through his entire life without ever signing his name. Because once you sign your name, you're relinquishing certain rights, and you're obligated to some, some other man. You're obligating yourself to somebody else. You're becoming like a slave. So everybody you, just, okay, if you want to do something and uh, you want to rescind all your signatures, you why? Need to have, do you do it non pro tongue to birth? Yeah. To yeah. You just don't want to access to – to you, you – like I said, if the IRS is coming after you and they try to say, well, are you a U.S. citizen, what does that have to do with me getting a, mail, a letter in the mailbox? And I'm telling you, it's causing me stress. What does that have to do? With me having a driver's license, what does that have to do with me having a social security number? What does that have to do with anything? Because no man is going to ever stand across you in a court of record. It's always going to be an attorney. So an a, the attorney's not allowed to speak in a common law court of record. I told you what my sister did when an attorney tried to speak. Right. And the judge told the attorney the rules. You know the rules. An attorney's not allowed to speak unless they have firsthand knowledge or witness something. So is that attorney going to say they have firsthand witness knowledge that you obtained the social security card sometime in your life? The attorney's going to be like, no. I have no idea if she's got a social security in the guard or if she rescinded it or she revoked it. You guys are doing way too much paperwork. And like I said, I don't charge a, da I don't charge a dime to help anybody. So you've got to be careful. All these people who are teaching you this stuff and they're charging you money, um, you know what? I always say, how is that relevant to the matter at hand? Where is my common law court of record? And the judge tries to talk to me and said, can I appeal whatever decision comes from this court today? He says, yes, then I'm not in a court of record because the Seventh Amendment says that if I'm in a common law court of record, I cannot appeal this. There is no retrial and there's no rehearing by any other court in this land. I want to go into a common law court of record, and I want to go there now, and I will only answer there. I'm not going to answer about Social Security costs. I'm not answering about tax returns. I'm not answering anything. Can I appeal it if I lose? Yes. Well, then I'm not under the Seventh Amendment. I'm, you're not obeying your oath of office. Your oath of office says that you have to protect my rights if I evoke the Constitution to say that I am a man, and if it's worth more than $20, I have the right to move this before a court of record. Where's my court of record? You took an oath, right, sir? Yeah. And that's what I always tell people all the time. This poor guy said to me, I think of Tom Murphy, 
said he's suing a judge in um, like tax court. I said she's not a judge. She's an administrating hearing officer. She's under the administrative capacity. It's like she works for Coca-Cola. So if, if you work for Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola told you to come before an administrative hearing today and Coca-Cola board of directors, and you try to say, well, I have the right to carry a gun. I got the Second Amendment right to carry a gun. She'll, she'll look at you and like, uh, sir, this is Coca-Cola. This is an administrating hearing. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, constitutional right. You, you work for us. You know. So like I said, when you people are like, well, the United States citizen, well, you work for them. You're part of the, you're like an employee. So you'll start saying, well, I got this right. And you're talking to an administrating hearing officer. It's not a judge. She didn't have to take an oath of office to become a Coca-Cola hearing officer. She doesn't have to take an oath of office if she's an administrating hearing. So the easiest thing to say when any woman or any man who's wearing a black robe comes before you say, if I lose, can I appeal this? And they said, yes, then I must be in an administrative court. Because under the court of record, I can't appeal it. It's over. It's done. The Seventh Amendment is very simple. There's, there's nothing um, – like I said, there's nothing fancy about the Seventh Amendment. It's, it's, it's like one sentence long. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm typing that right now because, like I said, it's, it's very simple. And that the easiest way to, to get this all done with all these judges is just say, can I appeal the decision of the court today? And he says, yes, I'm not on common law court of record. Here you go. The Seventh Amendment. In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved. And no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States other than rules of the common law. There you go. So it can't be reexamined in any court in the United States, so I don't know where they're going to retry it. It's a very simple – Seventh Amendment is simple, and the Ninth Amendment is even simpler. The Ninth Amendment just says uh, whatever rights man has before this contract was written between the federal government and the states, man still has those rights. Those rights never changed. So the Ninth Amendment is um, – it's, it's actually called a savings to pseudo clause, and all that means is that it's an escape clause for a man who doesn't want to operate underneath that contract. So that, like I said, the, the Ninth Amendment – nobody talks about the Ninth Amendment, but the Ninth Amendment is the most powerful um, uh, um, amendment that we have to drag everybody into a common law court of record because it's like, look, I had the right to drag – Body into a common law court of record before this constitution was created. I had the right to go before a jury before the United States existed in 1776. I had this right to have a trial by jury for the last 10,000 years. Just because you guys made a new contract between the federal government and the states doesn't eliminate my rights because it's very simple. See, the enumeration in the constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. The people always had a right to go before their community for a trial. And you go back to Hannah Robbie, you go back 10,000 years, you go back to cavemen. They always had a right to have other people determine whether or not they'd done wrong to each other and determine what the punishment was going to be. Way antecedent to the Constitution being enacted. So what they're trying to say, well, now we have a Constitution, now we've got to do it all this way. No, we don't. The people always got the right to do it the way we've always done it. Just because you guys came up with a new Constitution, it's 1793, doesn't mean we're going to forget about the old ways, how we always did things. And they said, okay, fine. Whatever rights you had to have whatever trials you had prior to this Constitution, you know what? You still got that right to do that trial that way. So there you go. You always throw the Ninth Amendment at them. Well, really the, uh, the Ninth Article. But um, like I said, you know, that, and that's how you pin them in there. That's how you pin judges in the seat, if you say it correctly. Perfecto, perfecto. Ahí terminó okay, el, el, el video. ¿Eh? Es increíble este video. Este es uno de los casos que yo le estoy presentando ahora. ¿Eh? Yo lo que anoté eh, en clave, anoté acá. La constitución está para proteger los derechos. ¿Eh? Para proteger los derechos. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que el gobierno, por ley, en, si en Estados Unidos tiene, hay una ley de que la constitución está para proteger los derechos de los, de los hombres vivos, en este caso, eh, y, no puede, y dice que no puede interferir el gobierno en los derechos, una clave tenés ahí. La segunda clave le dice que si le estresa le va a cobrar 10 mil 
dólares. Le aplica el, la, el remedy, le dice. ¿eh? ¿Eh? Como, como una medicina. medicina ¿eh? El remedio. ¿eh? Entonces, por estresarle, vos... O sea, vos él, él sería el estresado. Podés cobrarle el monto que vos desees en realidad. Porque vos creas tu realidad, acuérdate eso. Como hombre vivo, vos creas el valor de tu estrés. ¿Eh? Por hacerte perder tiempo, vos podés cobrar tranquilamente. ¿Y quién te va a querer? O sea, ¿quién te va a querer seguir molestando si vos cobras eso? Entonces ya directamente le ponía ahí un límite. Pase o no. Pero si te perjudica, ya está ya. ¿Eh? Vos actúas. El que te perjudique, vos tenés que actuar sí o sí. 